Now we're going to tie Mercer's Biot Epoxy Stone. This is sort of a complicated little stonefly pattern made to match a golden stone nymph. Uh, it's got some neat little tricks to it, some unique, unique techniques. And we're going to start off using a Tiemco 2302 uh, hook that's got a little bit of a hump shank. And we're going to put a gold bead on there to start. But before we, before we get started, I'm going to walk through the recipe and then we're going to put some parts on in front of the bead before we go any further. So the recipe is going to be yellow turkey biots for the antennas and the tails. We're going to use the same yellow turkey biots for the abdomen. We're going to use a mottled turkey feather for the wing case, some gold synthetic dubbing for the thorax, a mottled hen feather for the legs, and we're going to finish off with a couple coats of epoxy. This is a two-part process on the epoxy, so we're going to come back and, and add a second coat once we've got the first one dry. So to start on this fly, we've got the bead on the hook, but I'm going to slide the bead back to the bin for the time being. I'm going to start some 6 out yellow thread just behind the eye. Trim off my tag end. And I'm going to pick out two yellow goose biots, I'm sorry, turkey biots here. There's no reason you couldn't use goose, but since we've got the turkey that we need for the body, we're going to use the same feathers. I'm going to oppose these two biots, so back to back, curving away from each other, much like you do the tail on many stonefly nymphs, but we're going to tie these going forward for the, for the antennas on this fly. So we're just going to reverse the technique. I'm going to measure these about a half a shank long. I'm going to lay these in on either side of the hook and I'll pinch them in my thread hand in this case. I'm going to come up and over, get a couple of pinch wraps on there, and I'll wrap just slightly over them and then anchor them going backwards. I want to trim those butt ends off and try to keep my bulk down to a minimum here. Now I'm going to come in right here and whip finish this thread. And I'll go ahead and trim it. Now I can slide my bead up. So we've got those biots coming out the front of the bead now. Now I'll restart the thread behind here. And I'll come back all the way to the bend and we'll tie our tails in. I'm going to take two more of these yellow biots. I'm going to oppose them the same way. We're going to tie these in coming out the back of the fly for the tails. And we want these about a half a shank as well. Lay these in at a slight angle and let the thread torque twist them to straight. And I'm not going to carry too far forward over these buttons because we're going to build a lead wire underbody to widen this fly out a little bit. So I'm going to trim those stub ends off close to the back of the fly. Now golden stone nymphs have a wide flat profile, so to make this fly a little more realistic, we're going to take a piece of lead wire, and in this case this is 20 thousandths, you could even go up to 25 thousandths. I'm going to take just a single flat piece, I'm going to lay it in along the far side of the hook, and I'm going to tie it down along the shank, almost all the way back to the tail. I can kind of twist that around to break it off just even with those last thread wraps. Then I'll tie this same piece in on the near side. And this is going to widen out our shank profile, give us a little wider cross section on the fly. It's going to be a little more realistic and not quite so round in cross section. So I'll break this piece off as well. We've just made a little bit wider body. I'm going to run the thread back. And you can see there's a little bit of a step here between the end of those lead wraps and the bare hook where we've tied the tails on. I'm going to smooth down my ends a bit. I'm going to use the thread to just build a thread dam, tapering that a little more smoothly so we don't have a big jump between the diameters. Build a bit of a thread underbody here. You can see I'm just working back and forth to keep things smoothed out. And we're going to build our abdomen now. Now this is a goose or a turkey biot abdomen, so we want to use some of the wider biots toward the base of the feather. They'll give us a little better coverage. We've got a big hook to wrap this feather up, and we're not going to be able to do it with one feather. So we're going to try to use a wide biot so we can get as much out of it as we can. It'll get, allow us a little more overlap with that segmented look. But we're going to tie a second biot in about halfway up in order to continue all the way up the hook shank. So I'm going to take one of these biots. I'll go ahead and pull both of them that we'll need out. 
And usually when I wrap a biad, I'll pull them off the stem rather than cut them off. That leaves a little extra at the end, just makes a little more, little more working room. Gives you a little slack to work with. I'm going to take this first biot, and you can see at the, the base of the biot, there's a notch. In this case, we want to tie a ribbed body with a stand-up edge. So we want to tie that notch facing up. So I'm going to take this biot and tie it in at the bend of the hook by its tip. I want to anchor it tightly in place, and I'll move my thread just in front of the hook point. This biot's not going to go very far over that, that wide lead underbody. I'll grab the end of the biot in my hackle pliers, and I'm going to start to wrap it forward from the base of the tail, slightly overlapping turns, and you can see this is going to get just about to where our thread was hanging before we run out of biot. I'll tie them off there, and I can trim out that very butt end, and you can see it was good that we peeled that feather off because that's all we ended up with by the time we were done, and we didn't get very far up the hook. So try to get as much out of it as you can. Now we're going to tie in a second biot to continue the body up, but if I tie it in right by the tip, my segmentation is going to be staggered. It's going to be a little tighter. So I'm going to cut this feather down a little bit, and I'm going to tie it in just like we did the first one, right on top of where we stopped. And this is going to let our segmentation just kind of feed right into the second biot without a, a hiccup in between. Now I'll start this biot and start to wrap forward. And again, I'm only getting two or three turns at a time here. And just as I run out, I'll tie that off with a couple turns of thread. I'll come in and trim those butt ends out. You can see that makes a nice segmented body without too much of a join in the center. Now we're going to tie in two wing cases. Mike Mercer has, has developed these epoxy back series of flies, and he's come to the conclusion that two wing cases will prevent the epoxy from soaking all the way through. So we're going to take one wing case made out of a turkey slip here that's just slightly narrower than the gap of the hook, and then another one right on top of it. So I'm going to cut two of these slips, like so. I'm going to cut the ends so that they're square. I'll set one aside for the time being. I'm going to lay the first one on top of the hook and trap it with a couple turns of thread. And we want about a 60-40 division between the thorax and the abdomen on this fly, so we're tying our wing case in right about the 60% point, which is slightly overlapped onto the abdomen. We're going to tie our second wing case in right on top of the first and overlap back over it. So you can see we've got two wing cases there. Now we're going to dub the thorax. Mike likes to use a dubbing loop technique for this. I don't find that it's terribly necessary. Uh, we can create the bulk we need with a coarse synthetic dubbing and just pick it out a little bit when we're done. So I'm going to start this dubbing and I want to build a, a pronounced thorax. So I'm going to go a little heavier than usual. And we've got a bigger hook so it's obviously going to take a little more dubbing to start. And I'm going to wrap this dubbing to build a fat thorax, but I want to leave a little room just behind the, the bead here. And now we're going to tie our legs in. This is kind of a neat little trick on this fly. We've got a mottled hen back feather here. I'm going to take and strip the fibers and fluff off the bottom. And I'm going to come in and just cut the center stem of the feather. I'm going to just try to get the very center stem, leaving a little V section. I'm going to lay this in on top of the fly, and the section of feather that we've got left, I want that length to be about the same as the thorax. I'm going to lay this in on top of the fly, and I'll trap it with a couple of turns of thread just behind the bead. It's just kind of free-floating for right now. Now we're going to fold our first wing case forward, and this will pin that hen feather down. You can see as I pull that over, it pushes the hen feather down. I'll tie it down with a couple turns of thread. I'll pull my second wing case over and tie it down with a couple as well. I'll trim those stub ends off, and we're going to have sort of a two-step epoxy program here. So right now, I'm just going to leave my thread hanging, and we'll put a coat of epoxy on, and once that's dry, we'll add a second coat of epoxy over the top of that and finish the fly off. I'll just use a sticky note here to apply the epoxy. It's an easy way to do it, and it's easy to clean up. It's not going to take very much epoxy at all for this fly. 
I'm going to take two equal amounts. I'm using five minute epoxy. I'm just going to mix this up with a dubbing needle and I want to make sure that I don't introduce too many bubbles into this epoxy. Just keeping the dubbing needle down onto the, onto the paper. And I'll mix up a light coat. You've only got five minutes of working time with this and this epoxy is the thinnest when you first mix it. The longer you wait, the goopier it's going to get. Um, and I like this first coat to be relatively thin. So I'm going to come in and just draw these legs down. I'm going to put a coat of epoxy over that wing case and that wing case being a little absorptive will start to pick up that epoxy and soak it in a little. We're going to give this a few minutes to dry and then we'll come back and add the second coat and finish the fly off. All right, it looks like the first coat on this wing case is dry now, so we're going to add the second coat. We're going to come in and basically do the same thing one more time. Two equal parts of epoxy. And this is going to build up a little bit more of a, a bulge on top of that wing case. Really makes for a neat look and fly when it's all said and done. It's a little more effort than usually is put in, but it really makes for a nice fly when you're all, all finished up. So we're going to mix up this second coat of epoxy. Trying to keep that as thin and light as possible. And I'll take a, a nice big dollop. And again, I'll hold those legs down. And I'll put that right up on top of the wing case. And you can see how that'll really build up. That'll set up on top and not bleed into the turkey quill. So we're going to set that on top and just let that dry for a few minutes. And once that's dry, we'll come, up, come back in and finish off the head of the fly and add a few color spots along to model up the finish. All right, it looks like our second coat of epoxy is dried now. And you can see we've got a nice bulbous layer on top that's really pronounced. So to finish this fly off, now we're going to add just a touch more of this gold colored dubbing to fill in the collar here between the bead and the front of the thorax. So we'll twist just a bit of this on. We're going to wrap this dubbing in that void between the two segments just to finish out the front end of the fly. I'm going to whip finish just off the back edge of the bead to let those wraps tuck down under that dubbing. And trim my thread. And we're finally going to come in and add just a little bit of coloration with a marker. We're going to use a brown colored marker and you can kind of hold on to the biots and just sort of bar them up a little bit. And I'll just run over the high sides of the rib on the biot. You can see how that'll darken up the top of the fly a bit. And I'll just model up the biots on the tail as well. You can see how the stand up edge of those biots sort of wicks up the, the ink and feeds right along through the fly. And that's our finely finished biot epoxy stone.